Royal Guard. <laughs> that went about as bad as expected. <laughs> Lemon, my girl, my heart broken for this girl. The moment that she slipped that out, like audibly, my heart just shattered. Like I, they probably heard it like a mile away. <laughs> my girl Lemon, chase after that girl, get her. <laughs> I love that line, Nukumizu. That was such a great line. I'm a mob character. I'm not supposed to be chasing after her. This isn't my role, but there's no lead to go after her. Nobody's gonna go after her. It was like, oh, get him, girl. Go get, her. give her a hug. Give her something. <laughs> get her. Uh, that was a fantastic episode overall. Really great mix of the comedy to kind of break up the obvious heartbreak that was throughout this entire episode. My heart broke like several times. It just, it hurt. It hurt. It hurt. But yeah, I do love this because, like I've said several times before, this series excels at doing the usual rom com tropes. But doing it in a way that excels, doing it in an interesting way, and yes, throwing in some really great comedy and character chemistry in between it. But no, simply the fact of how much attention they're giving to Ayano and Asagumo. They're actually giving all three of these characters a lot of attention. So I get the struggle that each one of them is going through. I think the big kind of heartbreak here was obviously Asagumo. Seeing how she's struggling with this whole situation, she doesn't like this. She wants him to be happy. She's like she said before, I'm willing to let him go if he loves Lemon. If that's the case, let him go. But then right here, she's saying, it's all my fault. I should have let him chase after her. I should have let him go. But then I realized that I couldn't. My, my feelings are mixed up. I, that wasn't really my true feelings. I didn't want him to go. I could have let them be happy. I could have let them win. But... I was being selfish. It's like, girl, it's not your fault. <laughs> Again, Nukumizu is basically turning into like this, this romance therapist and he doesn't even realize it. And it all kind of works really well because he's not, I like how Nukumizu is not getting too much in people's business. He honestly doesn't want to get in people's business, but whenever it happens, he at least has these simple words to kind of help the situation. Just a little bit of a push, just a little bit of a nudge. That's all he really needs to do. And I think he's doing a fantastic job, despite the fact that he's completely out of his element. Mm, so this show's so good. <laughs> this show's so good. Let's let's start from the beginning. Opening up with yes, Ayano talking to Nikamizu and saying, "What the hell are you doing? Are you cheating with my girl?" <laughs> he's like, "Uh, I think you got to explain yourself too." <laughs> oh no, I was I was just trying to I was just trying to get some advice because Lemon's really really popular. Oh yeah, what was I doing? Uh, yeah, I was I was getting advice too, and that turns into a misunderstanding that Ayano thinks that Nikamizu wants to get with one of the girls in the literature club, so he invites obviously Lemon and uh, Yanami to a date. I love that little opening segment. <laughs> Yanami's like, I'm all dressed up and I'm looking super good and you invite us to an underground aquarium? What? You don't bring girls here? And then sure enough, like... <laughs> Asagumo and Lemon just super happy. Lemon over here just jumping up and down like a little dork. I love her so much. But yes, eventually that all leading to, yeah, getting a little bit into Lemon and how she's making up this facade that she's okay. It's okay. Oh, wait, we don't want to be alone because you're here too. No, don't worry about it. Let them be alone. I'm fine. And this is this, yes, ongoing lie that she's giving everybody that she's okay with this. I'm their biggest cheerleader. I want to help them out. I like this. I'm happy they're happy. You're lying to yourself, Lemon. Stop lying to yourself. And it, it almost kind of echoes the whole situation with Yanami. With Yanami trying to essentially push away Sosuke. Stop getting involved with my romance. Stop getting involved with everything. He wants her to be happy. And he now knows that Yanami loves him. But she doesn't want to get involved with that stuff. It's not letting me move on. I want to move on. And I think the problem that Lemon has... I mean, it's similar to what Sosuke is going through, obviously, or at least Yanami is going with, with Sosuke, is the idea that these are friends. These are friends that were wanting romance, and then the romance is lost, but they still want to be friends, or at least they're still going to be around each other, so they're going to constantly see that romance that they couldn't have. So yes, it, it is kind of painful to continue this by having Lemon go with them somewhere where they're going to be together. She's going to be constantly seeing it. And I, I like that whole aspect that when you see that moment where, you know, Asagumo grabs... Ayano's arm, suddenly it hits her. Lemon hits, it hits her. Like, it pains. You see that pain in her face because she's seeing something that I want. It's like, this isn't healthy. <laughs> this isn't healthy. I think the nice thing that comes from this whole situation, although, again, my heart broke for Lemon when she slipped that out, you know, you gotta go in there, get her. You're the one that I fell in love with. You need to, you need to do a better job. It was slipping out the fact that she loved him, finally puts it out there, and yes, now we have Ayano struggling, obviously. It's seeming like he's struggling with the fact that, wait, so I could have you? I could have had you? But I'm here with her. But it's good that it's out there. <laughs> this is no longer a lie that Lemon is giving. 
we finally got it out there. And yes, in the end, it's going to be, you know, I would, I, I struggle with <laughs> how it could go because again, I'm, I'm struggling with over even what I like that Nukumizo says that, you know, if you break up with Ayano, that's going to be worse for Lemon. She doesn't want you to break up with with Ayano just for her sake. That's not going to fix things, because yes, that's the question mark that comes up. But still, the moment that Lemon broke, it's like, oh crap! I just said that. <laughs> I just said that. No, it's not like that. She rushed out the door again. I loved Nukumizo rushing after her saying that, you know, no lead's going to go after her. But again, my just absolutely heartbreaking. All those shots, the music was fantastic. The, that shot of Lemon just looking up at the sky. The little story that she gives, which I think is very interesting. Now, again, again they have that little scene where he's standing with her. He's like, can I stand with you for a little bit until the bus gets here? Again, thank you, Nukumizu. He's trying to be there with her. Again, for a lot of cases, somebody that's hurting or something like that, it's simply as being there. And I get a little bit more into it later on when they actually go to her grandmother's place, having Nukumiza go, you know, this is hard because if she, if she at least showed her depression, it'd be maybe easier for us to know that something needs to be fixed. But she's not showing anything. She's being happy. And I like how it, this is always a mixed bag for me. <laughs> Suku, Sukunoki kind of saying, you know, look, you're always rushing to conclusion. It just it, it's it's okay. Sometimes being cheerful is the route to being cheerful. This is one of those things that you kind of hear a lot where the most happiest people are typically the ones that are hurting the most. And so it is a danger sign that somebody is so cheerful, even in the midst of something bad, because they're trying to hide it and eventually they break. Those are the people that are hurting the most. But at the same time, yes, I, I do, even in myself, see cheerfulness as being a way of pushing forward. And so it, this is a mixed bag where seeing Lemon being cheerful and not showing her true signs of pain is a danger sign. But at the same time, that is also a coping mechanism for a lot of people. So it might be good for Lemon and it might be dangerous for Lemon. It's, it's a struggle that happened there. But anyways, that story that she says to Nugumizu was actually very interesting because she's basically giving her story. Oh, yeah. I, you know, he brings up the fact that they're doing the whole literature thingy and trying to change the subject. And she's like, why do you talk about that in the midst of a girl being upset or something like that? <laughs> Make a funny story or something like that. But then she talks about the story that she was writing, which is a story about this girl that meets a prince. And she doesn't have etiquette, so she can't go to the castle. But the prince sees this and wants to help her. Helps her learn how to dance. And she tries and tries and tries until eventually the day that she can go to the castle. And then she cuts it off. And he's like, well, what, what happened in the story? Is that the end of the story? Do they live happily ever after? Well, yeah, they always live happily ever after in these stories. And then she goes and leaves. And again, another pain face on her face. Again, it kind of seemed like this is a parallel to, obviously, her story with Ayano. This idea of this prince that she's always loved. But she's always been a tomboy. She's always been, like, more athletic and everything like that. She never knew about how to be girly. I think what they're trying to parallel here is, again, the tomboy... That does, is not very girly, meeting the prince charming, and then trying to learn how to be a girl to catch his attention, but then it cuts it off there. Again, the story, yeah, eventually she gets him. That was my story, and I think that's what she was kind of planning there. That was my story. Eventually, I get to go to the castle with him. But the real story is that, again, obviously, she failed. She wasn't girly enough. She didn't properly learn etiquette and all this kind of stuff enough to be able to catch him. Somebody else came in and grabbed him. Somebody else that was more girly and whatnot grabbed him. <laughs> Just like it's heart. <laughs> my heart, my heart hurt. And again, I, I think the scarier thing is that that face that she gave as she left. And then you have these texts from people talking to Nukumizu. Hey, have you seen her since then? No, I haven't seen her since that day. It does start to kind of, it hurts. Like it, it's a painful thing of kind of being fearful about what happened to her. Again, thankfully, we we see that they do end up finding out that she's at her grandmother's. It does seem like she's going somewhere else to hopefully recuperate, get away from the whole thing. You know, she's basically running away from it, which is which is fine. She needs some time to recover. She needs to cope with this whole thing, get over it. It's just nice to know that she's at least there. <laughs> it's like a little bit of a a little bit of a relief that kind of just hits you the moment that you find out. Okay, Lemon's fine for now. It seems like Lemon's fine. But yeah, Sukunoki has enacted the plan. They're all gonna go there. On the way there, we have this goofy little scene of them just hanging out. And yes, Yanami apparently has obtained the perfect body, <laughs> even though she keeps eating, eating the damn noodles and stuff. And then, yes, finding out that apparently Komari and Tsukinoki have turned from rival love rivals into 
apparently BL Fujoshi pals. I didn't, I mean, I got a sense that Tsukinoki was Fujoshi. Again, they kept referencing the books. Don't touch those books that are in there. But I didn't know that Kamari was in that whole thing. So apparently now Kamari and Tsukinoki are just Fujoshi pals. I never care for Fujoshi characters. It's okay for now. <laughs> like, they haven't pushed it too much. The Fujoshi characters bug me whenever they just constantly. It just seems like that's all their character. Every time they talk about something, it has to be about top bottoms. So thankfully, this is just one conversation. Hopefully, it doesn't keep doing this. I kind of, I should have sensed that Kamari was a Fujoshi. Because it does seem like every now and then she'll make a comment that sounds kind of dorky. It was, it was mainly in the whole thing with Sosuke. When he got dragged away by Sosuke... Kamari said some kind of comment about him doing something to him. So I guess I should have seen it there. But no, eventually they go out there, they get lost, and then they go down a river. That was a cute little scene there with Yanami kind of just posing it for the camera, them trying to find the crab and everything. And then eventually uh, Lemon shows up. And again, it's kind of a nice thing that we finally have discovered where Lemon's at. Again, it does seem like she's obviously hiding something here. She's being cheerful. Again, Nukumizu is trying to figure it out. At the same time, Tsukinoki is, again giving him the best advice there is we just need to be here. We don't need to push onto her, fix, fix, you know, what do you need? What do you need? What do, you need? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? You're going to be okay. All this kind of stuff. Just, it's just being there. It is literally just being there, showing her that she does have friends that are supporting her, that that's not her whole life. I, I think there is an element of the moment that she did conf slip out the confession in front of Ayano, there's this element of her like realizing that everything's broken. I destroyed everything. Because I slipped that out, I wasn't supposed to slip that out. Yes, I do love him, but I was trying to say that I'm okay with it because he's happy. He's got his girl. I lost all that kind of stuff. And I was able to sort of skirt it this entire time by acting like I'm okay with it. And now it's out in the open. I've broke everything. I can't be in front of Ayano anymore. I can't be in front of Asagumo anymore. I can't be in front of my friends anymore. I need to run away. Now you're kind of showing that, no, we're all here. We're all fine. We're all at your side. We're going to support you. And again, I think that's just enough. That is enough. Just be there. And Nukumizu, if you can, pamper the girl. <laughs> again, anytime, anytime she reaches her hand up to you, you freaking nick grab those hands, dude. Pamper her. But yeah, overall, fantastic episode. Really loved it. Love the, yes, the bath scene. <laughs> What's great about the bath scene is, yes, tan girl, best girl, uh, you know, the widest Yanami possible without a shred of having any sunlight hit her skin. Sitting next to tan girl is great. But there's like this great thing where Yanami is like, oh, wow, I've never seen a bath like this. I've never seen a bath like this in person. And then she's like, can I take pictures and can I can I insinuate things? And it's like that girl's still trying to create gossip until now. This is like a callback to whenever Yanami and Nikomizu was at that restaurant together and she was thinking about taking a picture with his hand in the frame or whatever just to get people to talk about her being with somebody possibly rather than talking about Sosuke and Karen. <laughs> so even in the bath with Tan Girl, she's still trying to create gossip. Oh yeah, I forgot. After everybody was being goofy at the aquarium out of nowhere, Yanami suddenly gets into it. <laughs> she's like, this is a stupid place. Why'd you bring us here? And then suddenly she's getting all goofy with all the kids. Yeah, I kind of skimmed over it, but I really do like the amount of tension they're giving to everybody. I, I I think that whole scene with Asagumo taking Nukumizu off to the side was just, again, heartbreaking. She's struggling with this just as much as anybody else. This idea of, I'm perfectly fine as long as Ayano's happy because I love him that much. But then at the same time, I can't. I'm not accepting this. This is not, this is, I, I said I'm okay with it and that I walk away. But then the moment that she ran away and he went to go run after her, I stopped him. Because I realized at that point I couldn't let him go. I couldn't let him go after Lemon. Because I think she felt like if I let Ayano go, they would end up together. That I would be the loser. That I would end up being the one that would lose in the situation. And I couldn't do that. And like, he's like, oh, let me handle him. <laughs> Here, give me the damn GPS. <laughs> Can I still use the GPS? No, give me the damn GPS. I'll be curious how that plays out. Because there is that struggle there. Like I said, with Ayano, he looked like he was generally happy. Like, he was blushing, and he wanted to go after her. It That is that struggle, because, again, Aino has always liked her. But Aino never felt like he was good enough for Lemon. And now he's realized, oh, wait, I am good enough to get the girl I've always loved. What is he supposed to do? It, it is that struggle. No, you're with her. You can't just cheat on her and run, run off with Lemon. And, again, would Lemon be okay with that? There's a sense that, yes, Lemon would be, but I think Lemon would be conflicted. I honestly think, in the end, Lemon would be extremely conflicted because you just left a girl for me. But at the same time, 
I've always loved you and I kind of wanted to take you from her. I want to take you from her, but at the same time, that's wrong. <laughs> it is, again, the annoying aspect of love triangles that will forever be the bane of storytelling existence and it will keep happening. As much as Lemon is completely still in the show for me, there's just so many goofy little yummy moments that... <laughs> I have to say that moment the grandma was asking about food and she pushed Nukumizu down on the, the couch and sent, just like death stared at him. I immediately captured that and tweeted about that saying, this girl's killed before. <laughs> That's a face of a girl that has killed before. Mark my words, we'll find out at some point in this series that she has killed somebody. But anyhow, that's my thoughts on episode, was it six? Yeah, episode six. Episode six of Too Many Losing Heroines. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, hit that like button down below, comment, let me know if you like the episode. Additionally, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe before you leave. If you like this content, you want to support channel more, I have links in the description below. Greatly appreciate what it does. And until next time, y'all take care.